Hey S'mores, welcome to Morse Code. My name is Shannon Morse. A couple of weeks ago, I introduced something called host adapters using the Bino Nova, which is a little tool that can be used by hardware developers, makers, and hackers to read data off devices that you could not traditionally plug into consumer ports. TLDR, it's a hacker tool, and now I want to use mine to study all of these badges behind me. I mean, look at these things. All of them have all these fancy little ports, and I could do so much. I could do so much with all of these by just plugging them in and seeing what kind of interesting data is on them. So this week, I'm actually going to show you a demo using the command line interface and Python. Now, I am not a Python coder, and I have had minimal experience working with Python the past few years. I did do a show called Coding 101, but that was a long time ago. So this demo is really, really easy to follow along with, and I tried to make it as simple as possible, starting from scratch and going all the way through. And I always felt like it's important to do new things that put you kind of outside of your comfort zone and they make you think. So I'm hoping that this demo will do just that. Oftentimes we don't know if products we buy are storing any kind of data that we save locally. This can be like IoT products or wearables, whatever you might have. And generally consumers don't have the resources to dig into the hardware components of these products to see if their data is stored correctly. Plus it could void a warranty if you aren't careful. And in reference to that, this is one of those reasons I am an advocate for right to repair we should be able to repair our own devices and break into them in reverse engineering because that's awesome. So today's demo is going to show you a simple script that will read off flash memory to see if data is stored as plain text. You can build upon this for specific examples, like using a host adapter to see if your Wi-Fi password is being stored by some kind of client IoT device in plain text after it gets connected to a network. So before we get into a demo, I did want to thank Bino for sponsoring this episode. Working with hardware is hard enough as it is. Engineers and hackers spend hours fumbling with cumbersome and outdated adapters, recreating that wheel to get everything to talk to each other. The Nova USB host adapter from Bino changes all of that. With a simple, slim device, you can interact with I2C, SPI, UART, OneWire, and SWI protocols. The Nova host adapter works wherever you work. You can simply open up a COM port with your favorite terminal application or even on automate control with Python. Vigno has accessory boards for ecosystems like Feather and Stemma QT by Adafruit, Quick by SparkFun, and Microbus by MicroE. You don't even have to be technical either. Vigno has intuitive desktop software that is supported on Windows, macOS, and Linux. It's even been featured in the Amp Hour, the Embedded Muse, and Hackster. So if you are an engineer, a hobbyist, or a student, working with hardware just got a lot easier. Learn more by visiting Bino.io, that's B-I-N-H-O dot I-O, and I would like to thank Bino for sponsoring this video. So let's get started with this demo. Now I will be showing you my command line interface on Windows 10 that I have pre-recorded throughout this entire thing so that you can follow along. But your specific commands will vary just a little bit based on where you save things in your file directory. So for this demo, I am using three different hardware components. First is the Bino Nova host adapter and the USB-C cable it came with. Then we have the Bino Feather accessory board, remember I mentioned Feather, and the Adafruit SPI FRAM breakout board with some pin connector cables. Now you already know about the host adapter, but the Feather accessory board allows your host adapter to interface with Feather devices, of which there are plenty to choose from and purchase yourself. Now Feather boards are cross-compatible little lightweight boards that can allow developers to mix and match microcontrollers, wireless protocols, and extensions to build all sorts of really cool hardware. The Feather board that we are connecting to the host adapter and the interface board is the SPI FRAM breakout board by Adafruit. Now FRAM, spelled F-R-A-M, and I like to say FRAM, stores data within itself even after the power is lost. It's a type of memory which is called RAM, which stands for random access memory, called ferroelectric RAM, with a storage memory chip, but it's faster than flash memory. It interfaces using SPI, which is spelled S-P-I, which is one of those protocols that the Nova host adapter 
doctor can interpret. So we are going to be using this setup to show how RAM could be storing data in plain text even after power is lost. Connect your Nova to your USB port and just let it hang out for now. Don't open mission control or connect it in the application. We are going to initiate it later. Now to do this on Windows 10, first you want to download the Python executable and run it on your Windows 10 desktop. All you have to do is go to the Python website, just click on the yellow button on the Python page and then install it. This will allow you to run Python scripts right from your desktop. The next thing you need is a package manager for Python, which is called pip, P-I-P. -P. Now pip allows you to install and manage packages that run with Python, but they are not originally a part of Python's standard library. Newer versions of Python should already have pip installed, but just in case yours doesn't, you can always download pip into your Python directory from the link that I have shared down below. It's at bootstrap.pypa.io. You just right click on getpip.py and then choose save link as. Now open your command prompt with the Windows key, then just type in cmd and navigate over to where that file was saved and run python get-pip.py. So for me to do this, I would have to type in cd c colon users slash shannon slash app data slash local slash program slash python slash python 39 and hit enter because I put it in there for some crazy reason. This will change my cmd directory over to the python 39 folder where I can install pip. Then we install pip by typing in python get-pip.py. So after this, you set a new path for Python scripts by typing in set x path, all uppercase. And then I'm just gonna put this part of the script down below and you can see it on your screen right now. Now you will notice when you do this that a scripts folder is now available in your Python 39 directory. So change your directory over to that scripts folder by typing in cd scripts and then just type in pip for pip. When you type in pip, you should see a bunch of options pop up in your cmd or your command line. These are all the different things that you can do with pip. So you can read through this on your own time, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip over it. So to test that you actually had it installed correctly, obviously we have the option, so it should be good to go, but you can also type in something like pip tack v, that's an uppercase v. This will show you the version of pip that you have installed so you can see my version here. Now from here, lots of these commands will not show you any output unless there's any kind of error. So if you type in a command and it says nothing, don't panic, that's what it's supposed to do. While still in the scripts folder, you wanna download the Bino host adapter Python library with pip. So to do so, type in pip install bino-host adapter and hit enter. Then you wanna change your directory back over to the Python 39 folder. Now, when you're using the command line interface on Linux, I know that there are ways that you can set up aliases and you can also set up paths so that you can basically skip a lot of this changing of directories. I'm not sure if you can do the same thing with Windows 10. As I mentioned before, I don't really work in the command line in Windows 10. I do it on Linux, but not on Windows 10. So this part was kind of new for me. So I kept on just changing directories. If you know how to automatically set that up for yourself, you don't have to go through this process, but I'm gonna show you the newbie way. So change your directory over to Python 39, again to that folder, and all you have to do is type in CD and then period, period, and hit enter. And then you wanna type in Python, and this will actually get you into Python so you can start typing in Python commands. Now while in Python, verify that the Nova can communicate with the Python library by typing in from Bino host adapter, import Bino utilities. And then you wanna type in devices equals Bino utilities dot list available devices and hit enter. After that, you should type in print devices. Now, if all goes great, then you should print out your COM port that the Nova is connected to. Just like in the last video, mine shows up as COM4. And if you look at your Nova around this point, you will notice that the LED has changed colors because it has been initiated. Now exit Python, I exit with control Z, and then CD over to scripts or change directory over to scripts, and then type in the following to install Adafruit Blinka libraries. Pip install Adafruit-Blinka. Easy. Now once installed, in order for Adafruit Blinka libraries to use the Bino Nova, you need to set the Blinka Nova environment variable by typing in set Blinka Nova equals one. Now back to Python where we are going to verify that everything can see everything else. So I'm just gonna CD back over to the Python folder, type in Python again, and then I'm going to type in import board, hit enter, and then I will type in dir, like directory, and board in parentheses. And you 
should see a whole bunch of communication protocols listed. So everything is working so far, but we haven't actually even touched the memory on this new board that we are checking out. So the next part is going to install a library from GitHub. So hop on over to GitHub for the CircuitPython bundled library and download Adafruit CircuitPython bundle PY, and the one I got is 2020.1015.zip. That's the newest version. Unzip it wherever you want. I suggest putting it somewhere that is easy to find. Now, CircuitPython is a programming language that simplifies experimenting with small microcontroller boards, kind of like the one that we are messing with today. You can write code in any text editor and go back and edit that code really easily. So our demo script will be using CircuitPython. Now, this was all set up so that your computer can actually read what's going on on these components. Now we can actually read the FRAM breakout board with a handy little script that Adafruit supplies on their website, which was slightly edited for this demo, and I will put the description down below so you can actually just copy and paste it for yourself. The script will read the value saved on the board into your CMD as an output. Now as brand new boards, they will not have any data saved yet. But since this is a demo, it already has data stored in the memory. So if all goes well, I should see a bunch of text when the script runs. And if any of that text is written in plain text, then it should be retrievable and it should be obvious, say if it was storing like a password, for example. So in Notepad, we are going to copy this script straight from the Circuit Python Adafruit page, slightly edited. Now, if you read this script, first thing we are doing is importing all the libraries needed, and then we create the FRAM object telling our computer that it needs to pay attention to this board using spy and lastly printing out any data within the memory pretty simple it's only a few lines long but i definitely recommend reading through it so you can understand what this actual python script is doing now i just wrote mine in notepad and i saved it as a .py for a python script i saved it into the lib folder under that newly unzipped circuit python library that's why it was important to save it somewhere where you could easily find it now to run this script in the command line, first you want to make sure you're in your Python directory or wherever you can run Python from. Type in Python and then type in wherever your script is found. So mine is in i colon script slash script 5.py. So my actual text file that I had saved is script 5.py. Mine is saved under a folder that I made called script. So I tell Python to look over in that folder for that specific script. The nice thing is as long as you put in the first few characters Directors, usually finding files and directories is as easy as hitting tab to complete the command. That's called tab complete. So I could type in I colon SC tab and it should complete the entry for script, that directory, and so on and so forth. Just a little handy tip for you right there. It's very similar to the Linux command line interface as well. Now, depending on how many characters you allowed on the print line in the script, mine is set to like 1000, I believe. This should print out that many characters from the memory on the board. Most of it is just going to be random data that I'm not going to dig into, but something seems a little bit out of place. I'm gonna highlight this part. Doesn't that look a little odd? To me, it looks like a password that was generated from a password manager, like LastPass. That's one of those random generated passwords. That's what it looks like to me. Now, if this was a consumer device that was using memory to pull up data like that, then that would prove to me that the product that I'm checking out was saving data in plain text because if that was a password, for example, then I would be able to read that password with my human eyes. It wouldn't be encrypted in any way. I think that is so cool. And I love learning new things like this. It always opens up this like realm of possibilities and understanding. Anytime I get to toy around with a new device like this, I'm always just so excited to see how much farther I can go with learning about it. Because even though I have just started with host adapters, I'm getting so much joy out of just like learning something new. I would love to know how you would use a host adapter to reverse engineer devices that we use every single day. Leave me a comment down below with any questions that you might have. And I did want to thank again, Bino for sponsoring this episode and make sure to subscribe to this channel. I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you soon. Bye y'all.